You are now entering Clearview, Illinois. The name of tonight's story is Grave Talker. None of us were superstitious, so none of us fussed about taking shortcuts through the graveyard. There was absolutely nothing off base about what we did. For us, cutting through Silvervale meant we could shave off two blocks from our trip to school. I remember the day it started like it was yesterday. Me, Oba, and my buddy Fred, who we called Ferd, and Twin, or Hopper, who we only called Twin because he had a twin brother who died when he was really young before we met him, passed through Silvervale Cemetery. It was a newer graveyard, more like a fancy park with gravestones. Under the cemetery was a high-end mausoleum. As of then, none of us had been down there yet because none of us had anyone die that was close enough to us. I saw Miss Krieg working out in the cemetery like at 5 a.m., said Twin. Really? Why? I asked. I didn't ask her. I just saw her up there, he replied. Then here's another question. What the fuck were you doing down here at that time? I asked. For the life of me, I can't recall what he said. In fact, I don't know if he even bothered to give me an answer. The funny thing about memory is, it isn't very reliable. Who knows what details I've missed already. So, I don't remember when it started. But at some point around this time, Twin took to reading the gravestones on our way to school. We tried to go out of our way to take different paths so we could get new messages. Beloved father and mother were amongst the most common, so those got boring much quicker than the ones that had cryptic meanings. Twin by far was the funniest of us, so he tended to have the best zingers. Life is better lived, said Twin looking at a well-tended tombstone. So I guess he missed the boat. Me and Fur chuckled. It wasn't Twin's best, but he got more and more elaborate as time went on. I bet this was the type of guy to run out on the check. How can you tell that? Ferd asked playfully. I just know, Twin said with equal playfulness. It started with a few jokes and evolved into a running gag. First he just made puns off of people's last words. Then he began to extrapolate the type of person these people were. And finally he started attempting to figure out what people's dying wish might be. Twin's jokes were 50-50, but that never stopped him from committing to it completely. One day, like any other, we three took a slightly different path closer to the pond and the entrance to the mausoleum. The trees were new and had just recently been brought in. Twin had finally found a headstone he liked. Look to the north for my coming on the fifth day, said Twin, reading a quote from an older stone covered and obscured by foliage grown out of control. This guy probably had one girlfriend his entire life, and his biggest regret was he couldn't finish his Dungeons & Dragons game. We chuckled as a woman who was in her 50s emerged from the brush. She was a decent-looking lady, ageless in a way an elf might be. Did you know Kelvin? She asked without the slightest hint of jest. We all froze in place, figuring we must have offended her loved one, but it was quite the opposite. Twin nervously took responsibility for his joke. No, I didn't. I'm sorry, he said apologetically. Then how did you know his last wish was to finish his last D&D campaign? Twin shrugged. The older woman hugged him as if what he said gave her some measure of comfort, though we never were able to truly figure out why. We kept walking to school but chose not to address the issue until we cleared the cemetery completely. Dude, did you know her or the dead guy? I asked Twin. No, I didn't think I did. He came back. And where did she come from anyways? Ferd added. Little did we know there was a bench on the other side of the bushes that overlooked the pond, but we didn't find that out until later. Man, I was just talking and I guessed right. Creepy, I said. And it was creepy indeed. Twin kept playing around doing the gravestone game, and the more he did it, the less funny it actually became. I mean, it was barely funny before, but now his insights were starting to get downright serious and specific. Unfortunately for me, my grandmother died a few weeks later and was buried in Silvervale. As we were out in the cemetery, so was Twin. He didn't just pass through this place like we did, but apparently he just hung out here. I walked over to Twin, who was standing over a grave, which I realized was his dead brother. I didn't say anything about it, 
but I just figured maybe that was where his fascination with death came from. Hey man, what's up? Why are you here? I asked. Twin smiled. He had obviously heard me, but he was distant, as if he could barely recognize me. He leaned in as if someone was telling him something. She loves you very much, and she wanted to leave you something, but didn't get around to telling you. Check the shed and the paint can by the lawnmower. I didn't know exactly what to say to that revelation, so I just met back up with my family and told Twin I'd see him later. I checked my grandmother's shed, and lo and behold, there was two G's in that paint can. I mentally rewound to that moment in the cemetery. Twin leaned over to listen to someone. Was he talking to my grandmother? When we met up to go to school next, I suggested we just take the long route and skip the cemetery completely. Ferd and Twin were having none of that, especially without an explanation that I didn't want to give in the first place. When I told Twin what he did after seeing him at the cemetery, he laughed it off as if it were nothing and that he was just hanging out at the cemetery for fun. He didn't realize how much more creepy it seemed that he didn't know or wasn't telling us why. I fought him tooth and nail not to go into the cemetery again, especially if he didn't know why he wanted to be there so badly. For Ferd and Twin, nothing had really changed, but for me, everything had. We took a different path as we tended to, and Twin joked around as he did every time. We came upon an unattended gravestone, so desolate and overgrown, the groundskeeper must have steered clear of it. The tombstone, the entire area, felt wrong somehow. The grave read, Secrets whispered in the dark of night are the strongest. What do you think it means? What was his deal? Ferd asked, still able to see it as a game. Twin looked up to the sky in puzzlement, as if the words would not come to him. I don't know. Twin said as if he had gotten no divine inspiration or hidden insight. Maybe it's got to be really dark, said Ferd. I smiled weakly, hoping Twin didn't take it as a challenge. Unfortunately for us all, he did. For any of us to effectively get to the cemetery, passing my house was the easiest route to get there. I obsessed over how Twin obsessed over it. So I took out my iPad and sat near my window all night just in case he made one of his mysterious jaunts to the cemetery. A bit after 2 a.m., a bike zoomed past my house with Twin pumping his legs furiously. I threw on my shoes and ran after him. I wasn't fast enough to catch up to him, but I didn't have far to run. At a distance, I could see dark shadows looming over the untended patch of graveyard. It began raining lightly and steadily built until the first rumbles of thunder emerged. As I got close enough to yell out, lightning flash and thunder boomed, muting me. I could see twin silhouette in the darkness and the rain next to a faint form of blackness, which could have been another shadow amongst the many long shadows of the mounting storm. I cried out again, and yet another blast of lightning struck, stealing my voice and outlining Twin and what seemed a shadow at his side. The rain was heavy now, and I struggled to see, let alone make out anything. I saw the darkness lean towards Twin's ear. The darkness enveloped him, and I could only see him tilt his waiting ear to listen. Twin! I yelled. There was no lightning or thunder to steal my voice, but there was no response either. I was close enough to see Twin in the darkness. Twin! I yelled to him over the pouring rain. He stood there as if crippled by an unknown weight, staring blankly ahead in contemplation. Lightning flashed and his eyes were unfocused, lost in contemplation, as if seeking the answer to a riddle. I yelled at Twin for minutes and he wouldn't respond. He just stared straight ahead, a prisoner in his own head, neither willing or wanting. I still see Twin here and again, and whatever he saw or heard then locked him there 13 years later. He visits the cemetery most days, says nothing, and does nothing. He has been frozen in time for 13 years. He functions as if he's on autopilot, unable to hold down a job or engage in anything resembling conversation. My friend has been trapped in his own head, wandering seeking the answer to a question that may have never had one to begin with. You are now exiting Clearview, Illinois city limits. Hope you enjoyed the trip.